it is finally spooky season. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I turned this trick or treat pail into this. Ooh. Ooh. This faux terracotta situation. Look at that. Isn't it cool? I think it's cool. Let's get started. The first thing you have to do is you have to prep your plastic pumpkin. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. I just decided to spray paint mine. I also went ahead and cut off all of the handles Ooh, because I didn't need them and I am going to be replacing them later. I may have bought like 10 or so. I found these all over the place, kind of. This larger size I found at Walmart for a dollar. And these were actually pretty hard to find. Out of the like three or four Walmarts in our area, only one had these. And I did this project at the end of September, so do we just not have as many of these this year or what? This size also came from Walmart for like 78 cents or so. And then, then I found these itty bitty ones. Um, I found three of these at a thrift store like five years ago, uh, randomly. I really liked the face. I've seen some of these online in the dollar store, blah, 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 but the face always kind of looks goofy. I think these would be perfect for like a little, little succulent, something like that. If you spent any amount of time on YouTube recently in the like DIY realm, then you've probably seen this technique of making a DIY texture paint. I will give you a very quick overview. Basically to make your DIY texture paint, you're going to need acrylic paint, super cheap. Some people water it down a little bit, it's up to you, whatever, live your life and you put a little bit of baking soda in it. Mine does have a hole, so every now and then I get a little surprise. You just mix that up and you brush it on and it gives this really, really realistic stone texture. A lot of people are using this technique to repaint thrifted bases, vases, thrifted glassware, that kind of thing, to make it look like they have this like hand-thrown pottery. So let's turn our cheap plastic pumpkins into terracotta. I've also seen people experiment with other additives slash mix-ins with their paint, so like baking soda, baking powder, sand, grout, you know, just really anything to give it a little bit of texture. Now, for this particular project, one of the trickiest parts of the whole thing is getting the terracotta color right. And I found that about three parts orange, two parts brown, one part white. Then from there, you can kind of add more orange if you want it to be a little brighter, add more white if you want it to be a little bit more pale, and add more brown if you want it to be a little bit more dulled, I guess. I liked it a little bit more earth tony. Then once you have your paint to the color that you want it, then you just add in your baking soda. It's honestly really hard to tell you how much of this to use because it depends on so many different things. It depends on how textured you want your paint to be. It also depends on how thick you want your paint to apply. My preference was when I had my paint mixed up to add in just a little, a little splash of water. This thinned it down enough to where I could actually just apply it on in thinner coats, which is what I preferred. Since I was trying to get the paint into all of these little grooves of the mold, the texture that I actually ended up preferring was when I got it to almost like a melted ice cream milkshake consistency. Very loose and still runny, but a little frothy, but not like foam frothy. And then you just start applying.
as you can see this paint isn't the most opaque it could be because it's just regular craft paint there are plenty of nicer brands out there but this will obviously do the job because this is what i use for all of mine because of this particular object that i'm covering i did want it to be thinner and i didn't want my mixture to be so thick that i was caking it on because i wanted it to get into all of the little the little grooves the little lines of the mouth It took about four coats for me to get a nice coverage on all of my pumpkins. The little ones are my favorite. I'm gonna sit you here. Hello friend and other friend and ideas friend. With every coat, it got more and more terracotta-esque. I also went around the edge and made sure to add extra paint however I could, whether it was on the top surface or the inner surface, because the top edge is what was the most problematic, and that's where it peeled the most. Finally, I did paint all the bottoms of mine and let them dry. Once all of your pieces are dry, then finally it is time to add this powdery finish. I knew I didn't want to go with just a simple whitewash of taking like a, a watered down white paint and then brushing it all over and then wiping that off. I like the look that aged terracotta has where it has this kind of powdery white mineral deposit. I don't know. So what I decided to use for this is all purpose, what's it called? all-purpose joint compound. You can get this all over the place. I've seen it at Dollar Tree, uh, Walmart, blah, 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 blah. I think I got this at Walmart. It wasn't expensive, probably, I think it was in between 10 and $15. And this goes a long way for projects like this. This was another part of the process where I thought I had to be more careful than what I actually did. At first, I was very delicately, you know, just... Uh, you don't have to do that. What actually works the best is to just make a ridiculous mess all over your piece and then when you're done wipe away the excess so what i would do is take a little globby glob and then just pat it all over your pumpkin basically you just want that joint compound to be in all of the nooks and crannies you can water it down and i actually think uh that makes it look a little bit more realistic and it also makes it go a little further because this stuff can get pretty thick and you're going to wipe away a lot of the excess anyways so it is kind of silly to have like a thick layer of this all over for me the best way to get the excess off was to start off more broadly and then work down to your details. I took a damp dish towel and took off most of the excess. And then if you want to kind of finesse the details, you can use a magic eraser. I made sure that mine was damp and I just kind of cleaned up around my favorite part. I know it's kind of crazy to think this, but there are some. I just like the way that the joint compound stayed in some of the nooks and crannies a little bit better. I also liked in some situations where the paint almost settled in a really weird way but it somehow looks very convincing.
Once you've got the joint compound layer where you want it, you're basically done. I have thought about going an extra step and doing like partial washes of green or brown. Um, if I were to do this, then I probably would water it down quite a bit and then just put it in areas where it looks like water kind of settles down the side of the pot. There was one of these that I accidentally dropped on my back deck and it got a little bit of dirt in a couple spots and it looked very believable. So, you know, if you wanted to, just roll it around in the dirt a little bit. <laughs> the final steps that I did was I sprayed the entire thing with a clear coat. Do I have it here? Hello? Are you here, my friend? Nope. Um, I used a Krylon brand clear fixative. I also made sure that it was matte. Once you seal it, then you can add whatever kind of handle you want. If you use a larger cord, you will have to make a little holes on the side a little bit bigger. You can do this with an X-Acto knife. Just be careful. Blood. 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 This is kind of just a final extra step and it depends on the style you like. I prefer this kind of larger cord. I think size wise, it just kind of matches, you know? I think it, it fits. I did find these bigger ones. I kind of had this idea of this size and this size, blah, blah, blah. This turned out really well too. Here you can see a giant one. And I can just imagine, you can you can use these as real planters. Just make sure you seal them up really well and add some drainage. I just like the way they look. Oh, oh, sorry. I like how they look stacked or like clustered. Look at that, fun. So yes, all in all, I think this project turned out quite well. I've got all of these along the bottom of our fireplace. They don't have anything in them yet, uh, mainly because I don't know what to put in them. I mean, it's just the right amount of like regular spooky and then like, that looks so good. So good. Speaking of, you can do this to them whatever you want. I started painting, I found these cheaper plastic skeletons at Dollar Tree. I think this would look very good in terracotta because the details aren't all there. With something like this, the grooves around the teeth are deeper, the eye sockets are deeper, there's these sharper parts that if it was actually terracotta, it would be very, very fragile. So I think something like this would be better because it's, it's a more generalized shape. And I also tested out a can. I don't know what was actually in this. I think it was beans. I could also imagine a little cluster of different sizes of these. If you make this project, please tag me. I would love to see it with the hashtag make with Blake. Speaking of Instagram, follow me over there because I am posting lots of pictures. And if you want to go a step further, your boy got a Patreon. Okay, I have a Patreon now. I've currently got two tiers. I've got a basic support tier where if you want to see previews of all of my projects as well as early releases of my future videos. And then I have a second tier which is currently my felt flower subscription box known as the best month box. The October box just closed but every month the box is open until the first of the following month to be signed up. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? You'll figure it out. All the links are in the description. All the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next week. This has been an unusually project heavy time for me. So subscribe if you want to see those projects. They're coming soon. And I'll see you in the next one. Where is my can? Where is my super soup? Oh, it's right in front of my face. A life's no fun without a good scare. Fun with some new tea. These kind of larger swoops. Swoops? Emotions? Words are hard.
This is Halloween, 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 Halloween. Where was I? I get in front of this camera and I lose my mind. Um, what are we talking about, friends? Someone help me get my life together. And then I also, <clears throat> I'm getting a little excited. <laughs> Subscribe and say 15 or more on your car insurance. Oh, why am I holding up this one? They're coming to get you, Barbara. You can go in. Do I have one? Hello? Hello? I don't have one. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody's having a problem talking today. Me? If you do this, you do... If you use a l larger cord... I can't talk. If you... <sighs> Actually, this isn't really that creepy. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I turned this. Oh, nope. Oh, no. The handle broke. 